Yo, top billing. I right, top billing. I hear you. Every other comment on my Seattle Seahawks content is fire Ken Norton Jr. Fire Ken Norton. So let's go ahead and get down to the brass tacks of the matter. Let's see how this would go or even if it's plausible. Think about this. If you know anything about football, you know that if you work for a certain head coach that specializes in a certain position or a certain side of the ball, you're working for him. You're not going to reinvent the wheel. You're going to do what he wants you to do. Seattle Seahawks are running Pete Carroll's scheme. They're not running Ken Norton Jr.'s scheme. I hate to break it to y'all. You know, I know you guys don't want to hear that, but this man is a prisoner of whatever Pete Carroll wants to do. He's Pete Carroll's uh, voice of reason or anything like that, right? He's his conduit. What Pete Carroll wants to go on, go on out there on that field, Ken Norton has to implement. This is how it goes. He's a coordinator. They're going to go during the middle of the week or during the week period and conjure up things that they want to do for certain teams. They're going to go over the film and all this and that. Pete Carroll's going to say, I want you to do this because he's going to call the plays, at least most of them, right? So meaning Ken Norton. So Pete Carroll's going to be like, I want you to play this. I want you to do this. And it's going to be the same stuff that they've been doing. I've been watching Pete Carroll's scheme since forever, right? Since he was in the NFL the first time. He's one of my all-time favorite coaches. You know me with a defensive back background, linebacker background. I've always studied guys who are at the top of the food chain. And Pete Carroll has been that forever. So especially at USC, same type stuff they're doing now they were doing back then. This is nothing new. Ken Norton learned this scheme from Pete Carroll, and he's implementing what Pete Carroll wants him to do. Ken Norton running no scheme with no deep third vertical bell. Ken Norton never played in a scheme like that. He's a linebacker. He probably wouldn't want to do that. He probably want to do something closer to when he played with the Niners and the Cowboys or something like that, which wasn't that. So you can tell where exactly he where his bread was buttered. It was with Pete Carroll. So blaming him. I can see, right, he's a low-hanging fruit. But you got to blame Pete Carroll. As crazy as that sounds, right, you're going to blame the one of the gods of defense. He's on the Mount Rushmore of defenses, created something in 2013 that I think will never be matched. If you want to see exactly why or think why that scheme now is not working like it did back then, it's very similar. They're doing very similar things. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> I hate to break it to y'all. Players make schemes. Schemes don't make players. You take that 2013 personnel, right, if you could freeze them and drop them off in 2020, you would be combining them with perhaps the best offense in the NFL, right, with what they're doing right now, with the best defense, one of the best defenses in history. That's just because of the personnel, the personnel fit. They don't have good personnel on defense across the board like they did before. They have some players that are very good, or even great in the in the mo if you're talking about a Jamal Adams, but beyond him, they have players who are good to average. Who on this 2020 team outside of maybe Jamal Adams, as great as he is, you can't just say he's flat out better than Cam Chancellor. He does some different things, but there's some stuff I believe Cam Chancellor does better than Jamal Adams, and one of them is cover. So imagine that there. But who would you start on? 2020 Seattle Seahawks and if you could take them to 2013 I'll hang up and listen crickets none of them dudes out there trotting out there over no damn Brandon Meebane Red Bryant Cliff Averill Averill both of them both of his names both of his names would start on if he were 2020 if you could bring him to 2020 um Chris Clemens was on that damn team man come on man Tony McDaniel Michael Bennett, you're talking about a whole bunch of dudes who would start on other teams. They would be frontline stars on other teams and were in reserve or in heavy rotation in Seattle. That is a special front. You do not have to fabricate pressure when you're playing with personnel like that. One hand washes the other, both wash the face. On the second level, you got the same people, Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright, only they were seven, eight years younger. So this, these 2020 Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright probably wouldn't start over the 2013 Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright if you're being honest about it. But they're still very good players, and to me, they kind of make the scheme go. Bruce Irvin, tough loss right there. He was in 2013, and obviously he's not the same player as he was before, even though I think he would still be a very good player on his defense if he weren't hurt. The secondary, 
that's what makes the entire operation to me because it's such a risky defense, even though it's a safe defense. You're telling three people to cover on a, a lot of field and one player to be so damn good that he has the entire field. That is tough. That free safety position, that post safety position is hella tough. Earl Thomas, my all-time favorite Seattle Seahawks player, especially for that particular scheme there, was perfect. Quandre Diggs looked like damn Earl Thomas last year. He's regressed to the mean. I hate to say that, right? I was I was pumping him up pause a lot. I was like, damn, they done found themselves a damn another Earl Thomas. In that half a season, he converted from cornerback to free safety. That was miraculous. I was like, damn, how somebody's that damn good they're able to do that? He's not doing that this year, right? He's not bad, but he's not spectacular like Earl Thomas was. At the strong safety position, you miss Jamal Adams all the time, but you can't even really use him like Cam Chancellor because you can't get organic pressure, so you have to use him to blitz a lot. (laughs) You're leaving guys out on an island when you do that, and you can't leave those guys on an island because they're not good. I'm sorry. I I mean, I can't sugarcoat it. Quentin Dunbar, I thought, was – average to above average before he was injured now he's playing injured and he looks horrible he looks poor out there that buffalo bills game he was struggling he shouldn't have been out there i can give him a pass for his injury but even before then he was not that good to me even in washington he wasn't some type of superstar to me so he would probably best served in an offense where he could probably play press man coverage and decide his own fate Trey Flowers. People are Trey Flowers made a couple of plays in the Buffalo Bills game and people went crazy. People dancing in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Over him making a couple of plays. He's terrible, man. You can't be serious. He would not start over Jeremy Lane, Byron Maxwell, Coleman, right? And you damn know he wouldn't start over a Brandon Browner back then or definitely not a Richard Sherman, right? The GOAT in that scheme. He fit that scheme to perfection. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back and show you some of the stuff that they were doing with them and how it's a little bit different, right? Even a guy like Theroux Simon, Trey Flowers is way down the line. When Shaq Griffin is healthy, to me, he is as good as, I don't know, he's not Browner or Sherman good. He below Maxwell to me too. It's Byron Maxwell. He can't be that damn old. Somebody called Byron Maxwell up and tell him he needs some help. Like, come on, man. This is crazy to me. Like, that scheme is hampered by its personnel. And to me, is what I told you before. You got to find ways to score even more. You got to be a better version of yourself on offense because the defense is not going to be able to help you out like that. You just need a few stops. You just can't rely on Chef Russell to dice everyone up and be perfect every game. He's going to have some off games. You just got to be a better version of yourself on offense or you got to go out and find some players or whatever like that. But, man, let's take a little bit of a look at some of the stuff that they used to do here. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Wait, 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 wait. I buried the lead, right? So not only are people saying fire Ken Norton, they're saying hire Dan Quint. Dan Quint. So keep in mind, right, I live in Atlanta. People in Atlanta, right? If people in Atlanta saw Dan Quinn on the ground on fire, right? They wouldn't. No, wait, hold on. Why? I'm not going to say that, right? Let's be let's be honest here, though. If somebody pointed out, was like, hey, that's Dan Quinn on the ground on fire right there. I'll be honest with you. Somebody's going to let his ass rotisserie for a good eight, nine seconds before they, before they try to help him here. And that's the guy you think is the savior of your defense. His defenses in Atlanta were just like the defenses, uh, just like Seattle's defense is now. In fact, it's like the same exact defense with similar type personnel across the board. So I don't see how he's an upgrade, but hey, it's always good to reach back when somebody was good, but that shit don't always work out. Some of you dudes be trying to go back to your ex-girlfriends and that shit don't work out. You be back miserable and stuff, <laughs> having to write them, them Dear Jane letters and Dear John letters and stuff. So also your man, Kyle Lewis. what I tell you about Kyle Lewis, rookie of the year over Luis Robert. I know you guys don't, you know what I'm saying, want to hear about any baseball like that, but that man was absolutely raking in his defensive prowess along with Lewis Robert. It'd be good to see those two go head to head. Uh, for years to come, but that's some good shit right there. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so check this out right here. This is definitely a point of contention for people. On this three-by-one set here, uh, you got pretty much the cheese going on right here. They just want to isolate and hit this this deep third zone here. Isaiah McKenzie, IMAC, 
working an over route. And let's be real here. They're playing with a ton of cushion, but this is still working deep thirds, a deep vertical right here. Not even deep, right? Because they're in the damn near in the red area. So keep in mind here, you got Quentin Dunbar having to cover this section of the field. Same thing with Trey Flowers here. So Trey Flowers, to me, you got to put this on him. He's worried about a quick, route right here he kind of drives on that when jamal adams is right here to deal with that same thing with kj Wright and them right here you have to be able to trust and believe or you have to understand the scheme enough to know that you still need to get vertical here especially in this portion of the field now <sighs> hate to do it to him man i love me some quandre Diggs, but his inability to impact plays like he did last year from a post safety, it's a tough position. This might be the toughest position in all of defense. That's why a lot of defenses don't run it. One guy to cover this much of the field, right, out there here, sideline to sideline, you got to be able to get there and help, or you're leaving these guys pretty much on the island, and you can call it cover zero, even if this is designed to keep passes in front of them so you're working deep vertically right here because you don't want to give up the big play but what do you do right you got to work back here this is coming back here but look what he does all right you see it right there everybody's working zone jamal adams is on is on them right here right it's probably john brown i would have to imagine john brown right there two people on one and it's not Jamal Adams' fault. He's not working vertically here. He needs to work vertical. This is on him. But look, Quandre Diggs, he's got to be able to work from this pedal here. Work from this pedal, quickly turn, stick that foot in the ground, and he's got to be able to get there. Man, it's tough, super tough, and you got a guy like Josh Allen putting it on the money, you can't get there. You're no help. But the guy who's really is no help is this guy right here, Who's supposed to be there? So, and you can look at this right here. They already knew it was touchdown right away because he sat down on this route. So they caught it before. All he had to do was get it there, and it's exactly what he did. So yeah, that's that's annoying for sure. All right, I want you to look at this right here, Oos. Like, this is first down. You're twelve forty six remaining in the first quarter. Why are they playing this soft in coverage? Now, I went back and watched a gang of 2013 Seattle. And at the very least, they will play kind of close quarters coverage, all right? Take a cold approach, close quarters coverage into the boundary and a little off-man coverage to the field. And they would work vertically, but still with more of a man principle. You still had to cover that amount of the field, but you were doing so more with man principles. So it was almost like, man coverage with zone principles now is zone coverage with some man principles it's like it is kind of different and that has nothing to do with ken norton he did not bring that there this screams you don't have any confidence in anyone on the field that's it look at this they're gonna be able to run a wheel route here for a first down imagine that you're gonna run a wheel route for a first down he gets so deep quentin dunbar it's, it's just ridiculous this is just too soft to coverage but they know their players. They just feel like these guys cannot react or work vertically without getting beaten. They don't want to give up a big play. Check this out right here. All right? You can see it coming. Look. Look how far Trey Flowers is, is retreating like a mug. He's retreating. Your man's damn near to the concession stand. Quentin Dunbar done ran to the concession stand. Look, he's able to run a wheel route. He want a real route and just get a first down from it. That's crazy. Not even a wheel route. I mean an out and up, right? Running an out and up and getting a first down from the slot on first down. That doesn't even make sense. Look, he caught the ball. Where the hell is Quentin Dunbar? He's in the concession stand. He's with the cheerleaders that ain't there. It makes no sense. All right, now check this out. Look, a lot more aggressive back in the day here. Right, still working vertically third there. You're going to have a switch up. They used to switch this. You would see Cam Chancellor a lot at, at post safety. They would switch up coverages on the back end. Uh, they would run cover two a lot. Uh, they would do a whole bunch of different stuff because they believed in these guys on the outside here. And more importantly, they believed in these guys in the front. They could get after it like nobody's business. Brandon Mebane had a freaking tilted nose. 
working with the guys around them with Michael Bennett and Cliff Averill and Chris Clemens and Bruce Irvin and these dudes, with these two dudes able to do any and everything out there on the field, just a different that's a different way, a different approach there. So you'll see them roll, roll covers there, almost bust to the flat. But they're work, working very aggressive. It's not press man coverage, but it's close quarters coverage with a cold approach, and they do it very well. Look at that. That's not giving any space. Nothing. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, just to underscore my point here. You can clearly see it's still zone. Richard Sherman's not following the receiver across. He still works vertically. But he understands what he's doing, and they got guys that can just flat out go get it at defensive back. It's just different, man. All right, check this out. This is what you want right here. Somebody who's going to challenge the receivers. Look, it's a similar, right, in the red area, just like that one before where they backed up like 100 yards. But look how much more aggressive they are here. You got Richard Sherman doing his one-two thing here. Using the sideline as an extra defender. No space given. And no shits given either. These guys were savages, man. Straight up savages. Like, it's just a different day to me. I don't find too many people outside of Jamal Adams to be savages up on that team, right? Like, I ain't joking. Like, I got to give, obviously, everybody outside of Jamal Adams and not meaning Wagner and Wright, guys who are savages and still savages, of course. But this dude right here, man. Is Trey Flowers out here doing anything like this? This dude set the tone to me, man. Look at this. Look at Deion Branch, man. Who does this, right? You see Trey Flowers and Quentin Dunbar doing something like this, or Shaq Griffin, Shaquille Griffin. Get out my way. Look at that. Get out my way. Look at Deion Branch. He was like, yes, sir. <laughs> I like Deion Branch, man. Y'all remember Deion Branch wasn't hard right there. Y'all remember when he was on the radio station back in the day? I think it was him, Hushman Zada, and – um. Man, Nate Burleson, I want to say, and they was talking that trash when they were in Seattle. Why well, he ain't hard right there? Because Seattle was savages, man. So got to find them savages eventually. But right now, you're going to have to do the best that you can do, and that's going to uh, that's going to be scoring more points, not turning the ball over, stop taking as many risks. I know everybody wants to see the crazy offense and stuff. Going to have to take less risks, no doubt about that. But you're going to have to work from turnovers on defense and just try to get some stops. Carlos Dunlap is a savage, that's for sure. I might have to do something on Carlos Dunlap, but he was definitely a savage, and uh, he fits in on the new mode, but it is what it is right there. I know some of you guys are not quite savages in your lives, and you're like, he hit Russell. Who cares? Go get these dudes, man, if they can help your team win a national, I'm sorry, win a Super Bowl, and um, don't be worrying about stupid stuff like that. That's just my opinion right there. These other teams, I'm sorry, these other teams have a better chance of winning the Super Bowl if they're going to come and play some legitimate defense like you saw with with the Buffalo Bills. Now, Buffalo didn't even play that great a defense. They were just able to make some stops and some turnovers just like you need Seattle to do. So hopefully that comes to fruition for Seattle. But there are a ton of teams out there that Seattle has to contend with. Better have all hands on decks, all right? With that being said, your boy Merv Underground King. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.